Hey everyone, welcome back to Diabetic Savvy, the channel where we're improving the diabetic experience one meal at a time. Today's a really special hybrid video, and I mean that because we're going to be not only reviewing a product, but we're also going to be making a recipe that adapts that product different than what it's traditionally made for. We're going to be reviewing Pillsbury's yellow sugar-free cake mix, but we're going to be making lemon vanilla cookies with it. So stay with us. If you're anything like me, you've had situations where either you're going out at the last minute, friends are coming over, you're making a quick dinner, or you simply run out of time and you need to make a quick dessert that you can count on. Commercial cake mix cookies are a great way to utilize a product that puts your own personal spin on it. Let's talk about the ingredients. First, we're going to start off with Pillsbury's yellow cake mix. Secondly, we're going to be using two whole eggs. A third of a cup of vegetable oil or any neutral oil will work. Just make sure it's a neutral oil so it doesn't flavor the cookie mix when you're baking them. One teaspoon of good quality lemon extract. You can also use a little bit of lemon zest if you wish. And then one teaspoon of Nielsen Massey vanilla bean paste. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of vanilla bean paste versus traditional extract. And this will help balance out some of that alcohol flavor from the traditional lemon extract that we're using in the recipe. And lastly, to garnish the cookies, we're going to be using about a half cup of powdered erythritol. It's a sugar substitute that will roll the cookie dough in before they bake. We've preheated our oven to 350 degrees. Now let's start mixing. So we're going to start off by putting in our eggs and we're just going to quickly break those up a little bit. Then we're adding our oil, our vanilla bean paste, and lastly, our lemon extract. And we're just going to quickly combine those. And now we'll fold in our cake mix. And once you can't see any more raw cake mix, you're done mixing. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I am a huge fan of ice cream scoops. They're a great multi-use tool in the kitchen, and they're also a perfect way to evenly portion out proper sized cookies. Now remember, we're gonna be rolling these in the powdered sugar substitute before we finish them on the tray. And with our cookies fully rolled, we're now ready to put them in our 350 degree oven for about six to eight minutes. One of the reasons that I always like making these recipes on the fly and a couple of different trays is that if it doesn't work out quite the way you think it's going to, you can make some adjustments on the second tray. So a couple of things about these cookies. Number one, they didn't flatten quite, quite as much as I, I would have liked and virtually all of the sugar substitute probably because it was in its powdered form, evaporated. So for our second tray, we're gonna bump our cooking time. We're also gonna flatten them about halfway just so we can help our cookies along while they spread during the baking process. So both trays of our cake mix cookies are done. Now, just to quickly recap, the first tray, if you recall, we left them in their ball form before we put them into the oven and we baked them for about eight minutes. Our second tray, we baked by pressing them down and we extended the baking time for about 12 minutes. So let's take a look at the differences before we try them. So if we take a look at both of these cookies, the first batch looks a lot more rustic on top, fairly reminiscent of a cake mix cookie that was allowed to spread on its own in the oven. But this one though, by helping it out along the way, a couple of things I noticed happened. It looks like it cooked much more evenly, kept a nice uniform shape. So I have to tell you, I mean, it's really a preference, but I would prefer this one from just strictly a visual appeal. Let's take a bite and check the textures. Now this is the cookie from our first tray, which baked for just about eight minutes. Really good. The flavor's there. Eight minutes was not long enough to bake these though. I would have probably gone about 12 minutes. It wouldn't have changed the top texture at all, but it would have crisped up the cookie just a little bit. So these are perfectly good. I would eat them all day, but a little bit underdone. Now let's try the second batch. These cookies, if you remember, were baked for 12 minutes, were pressed down to help the cookie spread along the way, which I think was the right thing to do.
much better. Cookie tastes fully done. It's got a nice, light, crispy exterior, but a little bit of a chew on the interior. Using that vanilla bean paste was the way to go. You get the vanilla first, then a little bit of creaminess from the cookie, and then you get hit with that lemon. I also don't know that we need the powdered sugar substitute on these cookies because you really can't taste it. You get all the sweetness from the batter itself. So this was a great experience. We typically research our recipes before we film them, but this was a lot of fun. Kind of learning as we go along the way. We hope you've enjoyed it. Couple of things about this. Number one, keep in mind the difference in, in dry measurement for the Pillsbury mix will affect your outcome. So two eggs, one third a cup of neutral oil, your extracts and flavoring as you need it, and then 12 minutes for your baking time at 350 degrees. You could probably go to 375 if you wanted on these, and I think that would work for a darker cookie, but for something light, like a white cookie or a yellow cookie in this case, the lower temperature with the lighter color preserves a lot of that really delicate look of the cookie. So what do we think about the cake mix by Pillsbury? The flavor's good. The only concern that I have is that it's sweetened with maltitol. That's a sweetener that causes digestive problems in a number of people. So if you have issues with that sweetener, just keep that in mind. And lastly, the availability of more sugar-free products has me incredibly excited and optimistic. And cheers to Pillsbury for doing that. We are having an incredible time empowering the diabetic community with really important food reviews as well as adaptive recipes. So if you're getting any value out of these videos, please consider hitting subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be made aware when new videos are being uploaded to the channel. We're so thrilled about you being part of the community. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in a few days with another recipe adaptation or food review. Thank you so much, be carb deliberate and take care of yourselves.